Hola, mi gente. This is Iris asking you to join my husband, Ronnie Keith, from the Short Desk Podcast for his new podcast called Conversations with Ronnie Keith. On this show, Ronnie Keith interviews extraordinary people from all walks of life. I will also join my husband time to time to spice things up a little bit and talk about our life and our family together. So just tune in every Friday on the same streaming platform that you're listening on for Conversations with Ronnie Keith. I got this part of the school, sir. Uh, I just got a quick question. You got a, uh, you got a, uh, a 100% Georgia boy right here, man. Born and raised. Got 100%. On South Side. Uh, Cleveland Avenue. South. Look, this brother right here, he got a, he got a, uh, look at his nappy hands right there, man. He need a haircut. Somebody please get some clippers, man. They shoe bigger than here. You have a shoe bigger than here. Uh, I, look, look, hey, look. He ain't represent Joe. Uh, what, what? So what's your experience like being like ugly in Atlanta? That's all I was saying. Ugly in Atlanta? I've been bad in Atlanta. Okay. Right. Real ugly in Atlanta. Right. Good, bad, ugly. All right. Uh, I, th- I think that'll be our, our time today for the documentary. All right. Appreciate it. Let's start the show. <laughs> To the short this podcast. This is episode 175. And we ain't doing fine. So we keep having technical issues. We are your host today. We've got John, Steph, and Dwayne. We are going to get to everything to you guys today. Today we we starting off with a little something special. Um I think it was a couple of episodes ago we tried the non-alcoholic beverage called toast and we gave our review there this week we did (laughs) we we have now went out and purchased this new internet social media sensation that everybody's buying and it's called xxl Mm. this is a moscato wine with 16 percent alcohol in it uh, Dwayne, what flavor did you go out and purchase? Well, take a guess. I like fruity shit. Pause. All of them are fruity. <laughs> mango. It is pause. Mango. Oh. All right, mango. Uh, Steph, what did you purchase? It was hard for me because you know mango is my favorite fruit, but I got the guava. guava. They got guava. I'm about to try mm-hmm. that one next. All right, mm-hmm. big timer. What did you purchase? I got mango. Mango? Okay. I'm jelly. I purchased strawberry and grapes. They had a blueberry, too. They had like six or seven different flavors. Yeah, they had a lot of flavors in there. Well, go ahead and try this here. See how it tastes for all of our people that love a nice uh, wine, Moscato, whatever you want to drink. They come in many different flavors, as Steph said. So we want to go ahead and try this. Um, Let's see what this tastes like. It smells good. Oh my god! I'll give it a one point eight out of ten. Wow! Really? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's your flavor, because baby, this is good. What you got, <laughs> Steph? For the what you got for the rating, Stacey? Steph. To say I hate Moscato, I'm not a Moscato drinker. This gets a ten. All right. This guava is busting. Dwayne. I'm surprised at how good it is, man. Because <laughs> I'm going to be honest with y'all. I tried another one that's supposed to be its competitor. Mm-hmm. It's called Max. And that one wasn't really that good. Um, this one is smoother. It's the same 16% alcohol as the other one. But this one is much, much better. Than the other one I tried. This is actually way better than I thought it would be. 
I'm not the wine drinker in the house, and the wine drinker in the house just took another sip of my glass. So it's mm. it's it, I give it. What did I say? I would give a seven. I give it a seven out of ten. This is I might I might my, my wife said a six, but I give it a seven. It's actually pretty good. I got the mango. By the way, guava okay. the man. Get the guava. It's so good. I try the guava. I love guava flavor. Mm. Big timer. Uh, one sip. Everybody knows the rules. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's uh, it's palatable. I'll, I'll say that it is palatable. Um, not something that uh, I would write home to, uh, but it is palatable. Uh, so if I had to give it a score, five point nine, five point nine. I pass. I pass. Just barely, but it pass. I guess I got the Robitussin flavored one because. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it smells divine. I, 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 when I opened up the bottle, I said, "Oh man, this smells great." What'd you say? You got the berry, strawberry, and grapes. Strawberry and grapes. Okay. This this was terrible. Yeah, one point eight. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I went down. with the guava because I was gonna go with the blueberry. Mm. Like, it might taste like cough syrup, but this is good. Yeah, yeah this is the worst Robitussin. NyQuil flavored drink you could ever have. Yeah, it actually, you know what? Now that I'm smelling it in a cup, it actually smells like NyQuil. Uh, that, that's the what bottle I think it first was. Yeah, it's, it's disgusting. All right, let's jump into fan mail. We've got a few fan mail. Well, not a few. We got two fan mail. Well, no, three. But no, that's part of two. Female uh, fan mails that we uh, need to get through. The first one, and again, guys. As always, when you guys have a question, a comment, uh, feedback, whatever it is, or idea, whatever it is, please do not hesitate when you open up the app for uh, whatever platform that you're streaming the podcast on. Hit that link at the top. It says send us a text. So what that does is that sends us a text and it'll come in our fan mail and what that does is it comes to us with the city and state that you're sending the fan mail from and the last four digits of your number we don't know who it is unless you want us to know who you are or unless you have you know whatever you want to say you know what i mean but please make sure that whenever you download us when we come out on tuesday and whatever day it is that you're able to listen to the short desk podcast please hit send us a text at that link and send it to us we are ready and willing and listen and that'll be even better for us when we do ask us anything because sometimes you know they get text messages or dms for ask us anything and that was a lot but now, if you hit this link, it comes straight there, and boom, we got it there. If you have an idea for a top five, if we do that, or a movie, or, or a show, or an album, or a comment, whatever it is, please send it through the send us a text link. Uh, this, ooh, excuse me, this first one comes from Waldorf, Maryland, and it says, P.S. I sent this as an email last week. Okay, an email. Okay. The vibe is off. Good morning, team. I used to look forward to Tuesdays and I would be one of the first to download and listen. It really pains me to send this, but as an avid listener in caps, I can tell when something is wrong. John is unusually quiet and seems disconnected from the show, from not weighing in on ratings of shows, etc., to the sound show sound issues. In addition, there seems to be underlining tension between he and Keith, and at times, he and Dwayne. I hate you, niggas. (laughs) Dwayne. Speaking of Dwayne, he often is condescending and dismissive of the other panelists, and it is not entertaining. Cutting folks off or one-upping them is not cool. For example, I enjoy John's financial segment. D. Wayne always counters John as if he has to be the smartest person in the room. He also seems to slide in slick comments towards everyone, but specifically to Steph. Steph seems to be taking it in stride, but it is not her usual, usually jovial self when interacting with the show. At first, I thought it was the cancer and unfortunate loss of her son, but it is more than that. She seems to be the butt of jokes on the show, and I do not like it. 
While I understand Keith started the podcast, the over-talking panelists and snide jokes, even when Steph has expressed that she doesn't like it, such as about her age, it's not funny nor enjoyable. A disappointed fan in Maryland. Oh, Gypsy Blake, Gypsy. Okay, I've talked to you several times uh, in the last couple of years. That's the first time I'm hearing something like this. Okay, well, thank you for that feedback. I guess that was, okay, P.S., I sent this as an email last week. Okay, well, let me check my email because I sure ain't, I know it didn't come in the fan mail, so let me check my emails. While I do that, we're going to get some responses around the room. Let's start off with you, big timer. Big timer, what is your response to this uh, fan mail that we have? Um. Uh, that's a lot. Um, number one, I am uh, myth by how I'm not weighing in on ratings and shows and et cetera, and the sound issues. I think that's been corrected. I most certainly do give a rating or a review uh, whenever we do consume something. I thought uh, I normally participate in top five. You didn't last week. Excuse me? You didn't last week. That was one time. I didn't give a rating? Uh, oh, no, you didn't do a review of the toast drink. You do oh, ratings. No. And oh, I didn't, do, I didn't do a review of the toast drink, no. And I'm sorry for interrupting. You should have kept going. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I didn't want to interrupt anybody, and I'm sorry I did that. Um, and I'm trying to email. So go ahead, John. I'm sorry. All right, let's take a quick break, y'all. Hey, podcast family, this is Keith with the Short Disc Podcast here to talk to you about Zencaster. Zencaster is the now all-in-one solution making podcasting. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. Listen, when I first started doing my podcast and I was looking for the right hosting area to host my podcast where I could record, do editing, do all those things. And I stumbled across one that didn't work out a little bit. So then I found Zencaster. Zencaster is so helpful. It really is helpful when I need to invite all my co-hosts on to help podcast with me when I need to send invites, when I need to re-record something, all those things that it provides on this uh app is what Zencaster does. And it's just one of the best things to do. I know one time I wanted to have about five people on the previous uh, app that I was using. You could only use three at one time. Now I can use up to about 12. So I really enjoy Zencaster. It just really helps me. Um, it's so easy to use. It's super easy to record a podcast. All you have to do is just log in and you start recording right away. It pr produces studio quality backgrounds. That's why we sound so good here on the Short Disc Podcast. Um, uh, we also have done our YouTube show from here when we were doing our YouTube. It records us very well with the YouTube using our cameras. Zencaster just has everything that you need. It's all in one. If you thought about podcasting before and realized that you need a lot of different tools and services, you won't have to worry about that with Zencaster. Zencaster is all in one and it also distributes to any of the apps that are hosting that you would want to play your podcast on like Spotify, Apple and other major destinations. If you really want to sign up for a podcasting hosting, please use my referral number. It will really help you to give you a nice little discount. Go to Zencaster.com backslash pricing and use my code, the short desk, and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. No problem. Um, mm. Quiet and seems disconnected from the show. I try not to parade my ignorance as far as uh, certain topics and subjects, because uh, there are certain tops that, topics and subjects that um, I don't necessarily have much to add to. Um, if I were to add to them, I would just be talking just for the sake of talking at that particular point. And uh, as I am in real life, I'm not much of a talker. <laughs> um, that's and anybody that knows me. I, uh, I, you know, I don't necessarily have the gift of the gab or anything like that. So um, this is just, you know, this is just me. 
Now, if it's a particular subject or anything, especially when it comes to finances or even sports to a certain degree, um, anything that, uh, you know, uh, has any uh, legal reference to it, uh, I'm interested in. And it's a byproduct of, you know, getting older, um, certain elements of those things I just mentioned, I work with on a daily basis. Uh, I didn't know that you felt that there was underlying tension between Keith and I, even Dwayne. Um, don't know necessarily what to say to that. <laughs> Cause I don't, I mean, we just had dinner or lunch uh, like a month ago and all things are fine. I don't have any type of uh, friction or um, I'm not a malcontent when it comes to Dwayne or Keith. So um, our relationship to me is in good standing and has always been in good standing. Um, if anybody gives this condescending, I don't know, maybe uh, or, or quips, it might be me. I'm aware of that, especially when it comes to maybe correcting someone. But it's not out of malice. And I don't take Dwayne as one to want to be the smartest guy in the room because Dwayne is, to me, and has always been a genuine, um, very caring, sometimes overly optimistic person. Am I still here? Yeah, we're all here. Okay. <laughs> so... And cutting folks off, not cool. I don't know where some of this is coming from. Um, nobody necessarily wants to be the smartest person in the room. Dwayne, normally when he wants to engage everybody in just about every other topic because he's genuinely inquisitive. And he's genuinely inquisitive about things you don't know. And if he doesn't know, he's going to ask clarifying questions and follow-up questions at least to me. Um, I don't know how everyone, how, how everyone else received it. Once again, based on this, everybody receives it differently. Um, I'm not really certain as to what slick comments were made to Steph. Maybe Steph could clarify that if there are any. I really don't know. I don't think that, you know, I don't know what the gripe is with Dwayne in this particular passage. I really don't. This must be one of my exes or something, John. I don't know. You think so? Maybe. It's very personal. All right. All right. We're not trying to make anybody the butt of jokes, especially Steph. We love Steph. So um, we haven't, you know, referenced the age thing in forever. Well, in the course of the universe, it hasn't been forever, but um, it's been a quite a while. And we're here just to have fun. We're not here to make anybody feel less than or really disenfranchise anyone's disposition when they come on here. So uh, that's all I have to say. All right. I may add more. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's jump to Steph. Steph, thoughts on this? And I'm still looking for the email. Uh, Gypsy, um, go ahead. So for me, um, let me first say, let me be fully transparent. Gypsy is my friend. Um, being a a woman in a man dominated space is difficult. And it's, it's a difficulty that I can't put into words. But let me first say, these three gentlemen I love dearly. Like, these are my brothers. This is my family. Um, <clears throat> And this wasn't a situation. Let me put this out there. It wasn't a situation where I had a conversation with my friend and be like, oh, I feel like this. It was definitely a situation where she said to me, this is what I observe. Okay. Um, well, let me back up. I don't want to say observe. This is her opinion. Um, because I think a couple of weeks ago, there was another friend who 
Well, I won't call him a friend. I've known him a long time. Sent me a text about his take on the show. And he kind of sort of trashed me. Um, I sent the text to Keith. I didn't share the text with John and Dwayne. And I probably should have. And he kind of sort of trashed me. And, you know, Keith's initial reaction was a little bit of, I won't say anger. I think he was irritated. Um, And then he said he had to think about it and think about it. And he was like, you know, this is his perspective. This is his opinion. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying that Keith agreed with him. I'm saying he was saying, you know, this is his opinion. Um, <clears throat> There are times when I feel um, a little outside of the box, per se. There, there are times when I feel a little slighted. But it's one of those situations where maybe my feelings might be hurt for three seconds and then boom, I bounce back because we're here to have fun. Um, I don't want anyone to ever think that I have any type of malice or hard feelings towards these men because I don't. Um, because I know if it came down to it, if I were in any danger or somebody was try- were trying to harm me, I, I know I could count on them to, to be there. You understand? So it's just one of those situations where I love the show. I love what we're doing. Um, I enjoy getting together with these gentlemen and putting content out. Um, but I don't... I won't go so far as to say that um, there's a complete disconnect. I won't say that. I just think sometimes we have off days Um, because I know, and and it's outside factors. It's not that anybody has any malice toward anybody else. I just think we have off days sometimes and, you know, we snap at each other um, because I know I've done my share of snapping and I've had my share of being snapped at. Um, But like I say, you know, I, as as the as Gypsy said, I take it in stride and I just go on, you know, and I hope that these gentlemen do the same. And I just hope that at any point, if there is anything that comes across as attitude or or, you know, you feel like I'm being malicious. I hope that you understand that that's never my intent, um, because truth be told, again, you know, I'm not there in Florida. I'm here in Atlanta. So, you know, that's a bit of a disconnect right there. But please understand, the three of you, I would do anything for you. Um, You know, you all were here for me through the loss of my son. You all were here with me through breast cancer. And you didn't skip a beat. You didn't allow me to skip a beat. So, you know, I thank you for that. But I would hope at any given point in time that if any of you had any type of issue with me, that you would be able to express that to me. And I also hope that if I ever have any type of issue with any of you, that you would provide a safe space for me to be open about that as well. So, um, Gypsy, I thank you um, because I know you your intentions are good. I know you have my back. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to continue to put out good content. So, you know, thank you for listening. And thank you for always supporting all right. And I still haven't found that email, but we're going to move over to Dwayne. Dwayne, what do you have to say? Um, I can't help but to want to make jokes. So, um, <laughs> there's no time I ever think I'm the smartest in any room. Trust me. I talk about my sister a lot, but I view things to how our relationship works. She has three degrees and I drive a truck for a living. There's no there's no you're the smartest person in the room feeling here. I ask a lot of questions because it's how my mind works. Um, I like to engage with everyone in their segment because I actually do want to talk about money with John. I actually do want to talk about um, reality shows with Steph because I kind of use them to connect with my wife because that's what she watches. So I don't come in the room when she's watching a reality show and be like, turn the TV off. Now I sit there and I ask her questions like, what is going on with this? There's times I used to watch them by my, with her, but I don't watch them that much anymore, but I still know the Kirks and the Rashida. So I ask her questions about it. That's how come I, I, I still know about it, but, and stepping on people, we do a show where we don't see each other. So, and we have things to say 
there's a thing that I do where I still listen to every show we do. And I don't ever want to listen to the show and be like, oh, I could ask Ron this question or I could ask John this question or I could ask Steph this question. And I didn't. So when I think of something, I ask you. That's why I ask so many questions. But I'm just here to do a good show um, and have a good time, man. That's all I got about that. I might take some more stuff later, but that's it. Thanks for listening to the show, though, Gypsy. All right. Thank you guys for your responses. Very nice diplomatic. Mine isn't going to be as diplomatic. (laughs) And I don't care. The boss. Number one. I didn't find the email. Maybe it was in spam. I do clear out my spam emails uh, every week. I didn't come across it. But uh, let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Well, first, let me say this before I start, because I like to dissect everything. Um, God blessed me with this show a couple of years ago. Before I even brought it to fruition, before I moved into this house we live in, God placed it in my spirit to start this show. And the prayers that I have received from my mother, from my wife, from my grandmother, who's no longer alive, that has been sold into me and my great grandmother. I would not allow anything or even the devil from hell itself to take this away from me that God has blessed me with. Because this is a blessing. Uh, We, when I say we, I'm talking about before this show, and I'm talking about me and my wife, we spent blood, sweat, and tears. I'm not even going to get into monetary because that's that's no, no value right now. Blood, sweat, and tears. Literally blood, sweat, and tears putting this together and making this something. And if I didn't want to do it, if I felt like it wasn't good, if I didn't like who's on the show, I wouldn't do it. Or those people wouldn't be on the show because it is my show. And I, and I know I'm, I'm sounding a little arrogant right now, but, and, and I usually don't because I love to, if you, you li- if you are an avid listener of the show, you hear me always giving props to my co-hosts. I never really want the spotlight on myself because it's about them without my co-hosts, the show would not be great. Okay. But I am going to put the spotlight on myself for once today. This is my show. And if I didn't want someone on here, if I felt like it was tension or if I felt like it was this, then guess what? They wouldn't be on here. I had two previous co-hosts. One left because they wanted to. They didn't want to be a part of it. The other one, it wasn't working out. And I'm okay with that. Now, how they took it is another, is, is another story. That's another story. I can't take how you take something when you're not a part of something. I'm going to still be who I am regardless. Now, if you want to keep it moving, you keep it moving. That's fine. But we've assembled a great team here. But according to the avid listener, Gypsy, who, as I stated earlier, we've had several conversations through DMs uh, over time. Uh, just as recently as not too long ago. Never heard this from her before. So this is the first. Um, so you being an avid listener and, 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 and you may take this as sarcasm, what I'm saying. It's not, it may sound like it, but I'm being myself when I say this to you as an avid listener, there's a few things that avid listeners do. They know what's going on. Number one, John hasn't missed rating anything when we do a top five or we do one has to go or we have to do a TV show or we have to do a movie. He may have some shitty selections. <laughs> but he doesn't miss anything. Is John is unusually quiet. As an avid listener, you would know being unusually quiet is something that, oh, well, John normally talks all the time. No, the hell he doesn't. John ain't talked since it was just me and him for a brief moment. And before that time when it was just me, him and Andrew. Other than that, you ain't going to get too much out of damn John. That's why he does financial review now, because I want to make sure I pull from him. And then when we had the sports show, 
he was talking on that one. May not have been what you were listening to at the time. I'm not even using that in that, but I'm just saying. But John doesn't talk. So he's not unusually quiet. He's usually quiet because that's who he is. But I make sure I try to pull from him as much as possible because he has a lot to give. That's why he was the first person I ever chose for this show to be my co-host instead of me just going solo. He was the first person, the very first person. Because I know he has a lot to offer. I know he has a lot to give, even though it's like pulling gums. And you can't really pull gums from anybody, but it's like pulling somebody's gums to get it out of them. So, yeah, he's quiet, disconnected. That's his demeanor. John seems like he's disconnected from everything. He's not, but he seems like it. And maybe this uh, this maybe ties into the tension you may think that we may have. Let me tell you something. Number one, I'm not going to get up on my free time taken away from my wife and my son and come on a show where I have tension with someone. Because when we get done recording like we are tonight, I'm the one that has to stay up hours and make sure everything sounds as beautiful as it sounds, or at times horrible, as you said, because sometimes there were sound issues with John, which it was. There were sound issues with Dwayne, too. I think the only people that really sound the greatest most of the time is really Steph. Sometimes I've sounded horrible. I don't know what she got as a computer. She got a great one. <laughs> but I'm not going to take time away from my wife and my son, who I know she probably gets frustrated at time because I'm not spending time with her or there's something that she wants me to do with her, but I can't do it because after we get done recording, I got to stay up late to make sure that this podcast gets out by midnight Tuesday. That's what I do. That's what I do. So I'm not going to come in and do something that I own with someone that I have tension with. Cause I'll just say, Hey, this ain't for you no more. That's it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let them know, hey, this ain't for you. And 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 I know John made the comment, hey, we just had dinner. Yeah, that's something. But again, I'm not going to do something with someone in my free time that I'm not earning a paycheck for that I don't like or I have tension with. This is just how we talk. We talk like this on the show. We talk like this in person. Maybe a couple of ep- some episodes ago, me and Dwayne, Got into it about LeBron. Guess what? We was talking on the phone laughing just that we trying to plan a vacation together. You was wrong, by the way, but go ahead. Whatever. <laughs> there you go trying to be right. Listen. <laughs> and so <gasps> how you feel and how you interpret it, you know what? There are times where we, we do cut each other off. We're very, very guilty of that with four talking heads, not being ver- visible with each other. When I first started this show, it was me, John and Andrew in my office. Then it transferred to me, John and Mahogany in my office. When we added stuff, it was me, John in my office until then. It was like, you know what? We could do this virtually and it sounds even better. So we're not able to see each other and feed off each other. And that's my fault. That's my fault. I'll take full responsibility for that because then we sound like we're talking over each other. A lot of podcasts with more than two talking heads tend to talk over each other. And that's a bad habit. Nobody's perfect in that. And this has been this has been something that has been happening since the beginning of this podcast. This isn't something that that just got worse over time. This has been from the beginning. It may sound worse now because we have four talking heads on this show, but that's something that has been happening since the beginning. Um, as Steph said, we all have outside things that's going on. We have a lot of stuff, and I'm going to do another plug here because, damn it, it's my show. Conversations with Ronnie Keith. Go ahead and listen on Friday. You'll hear what I had going on since Christmas Day up until a week or two ago, and we're still not all the way out of the woods. So we got a lot of stuff going on. Steph, as you said, Steph has been still dealing with stuff. Dwayne has his stuff. John has his stuff. Is the snipiness and all that other stuff on, on, done on purpose? I could say from my end, I'm only going to speak for me because it's my time to talk. No. 
Because again, if I don't want to do the show, or if I don't want somebody to do the show, it ain't going to happen. It just ain't going to happen. The jokes, the little bit, the running bit thing that I did with Steph with the weight for me saying that I was fat, uh, talking about her age when she was about to turn 42. Steph is 44. So that was two years ago. Uh, calling her big yellow, which wasn't a joke at first, but Steph. You know, it became that calling her big yellow. Guess what? Steph asked for those to stop. And damn it, for the last two years, they have stopped. Aside from me, uh, two or three episodes ago, by mistake, saying big yellow. Not big yellow, because I she my name. Quickly, but you quickly corrected me on we weren't going to say that anymore. I miss my name. Well, you told me you didn't want it to be said. That was not big. That was not me. So... I'm going to say this to you, and I know you Steph's friend. Steph may not like what I'm about to say. But as I said, this is me. Mary J say, take me as I am. You ain't got to take me. So I would say to you, you're disappointed. You don't like how the show's going. You don't like this. I've said this a couple of times. The last two times that I've said it was in Steph's defense due to someone saying something to her negatively about the show. So I'm going to say this to you now, because guess what? You're attacking me because it's my show since you are the first person out of the 83 countries and territories and over 1100 cities that download us to download us at midnight on tuesday just going off of what you said what i do in my personal life when i don't like something and i don't like being a part of it or i don't like doing it i don't like watching it i don't like listening Stop listening. Stop watching. Stop following. Stop talking to it. So I am I am inviting you. When you hear this part on Tuesday morning to hit the unsubscribe and unfollow button on whatever streaming app that you listen to us on Gypsy. And be done with the show. I'm inviting you to do that. I'm actually petitioning you to do that. Because I don't want this to call agitation in your life because you think that we have it out for your friend. And Dwayne is this horrible human being known to man. And John just is, doesn't really talk like he's supposed to. And I'm just, you know, this is my show, but I'm constantly making fun of stuff to this day. I'm inviting you to stop listening. Unfollow, unsubscribe. Because you don't have to do it. You don't have to put your pain, your, 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 your brain, your ears through agitation and pain. I'm not taking that from you because that's how you feel. That's how you feel. And I'm not taking that from you because that's how you feel. I can't dictate to you how you feel because that's how you feel. But I w- I'm inviting you and I'm petitioning you to hit the unfollow and unsubscribe. And that goes for anyone else. That may feel that same way. I'm inviting you to hit the unfollow and unsubscribe to the short desk podcast. And I'm going to tell you this. If you do that, I'm going to be fine. The God I serve has let me know that I'm going to be fine. This show is going to be fine. We've had some some pitfalls in the last three years. And guess what? This show has just kept on chugging along. So I know I'm going to be fine. So I'm inviting you to do that because as a listener and as an avid listener, I don't want to put you under that listening to something that you're taking that what you think it is. And that may be causing you a headache that may be causing you aggravation that may be causing you all these things that it shouldn't be. And I don't want to do that to you. Not with this show. Now, if you do enjoy it, keep listening. Keep listening. But I'm inviting you and I'm petitioning you to unfollow and unsubscribe. Moving on to the next fan mail. We got this here from Florida. Hey, Short Dress Crew, what is good? First off, I got to let y'all, you, y'all, y'all know I am fully, I don't know, it's some. Know. <laughs> it looks like a. Uh... Like European currency? 
Yeah, I don't know. Fully addicted to your podcast. Keith and Dwayne, you always bring that energy and keep things engaging. Dwayne, I respect your realness, different takes on things, and that you're not all about yourself either. And John, your financial corners are solid gold, but bro, we need more of you. Seriously, I am out here struggling with 401k and Roth options, and my job uh okay got me stressed over which is which help me out man john you could jump into that when we get into financial corner now a couple of quick questions for Dwayne. one what were your favorite pastimes growing up in saint kitts do you miss it uh two keith that episode with Dwayne's sister on conversations with Ronnie Keith was really good. They appear to have a dope sibling dynamic, but both hilarious and real. So I am curious, what were some of your your favorite things y'all did together back in the day in St. Kitts? Thanks again. Keep doing what you are doing, deuces. So, Dwayne, what were your favorite pastimes growing up in St. Kitts? Do you miss it? And then uh, I guess the, the question is... Uh, what were some of the favorite your favorite things that you and your sister did together back in the day in St. Kitts? Um, I, I St. Kitts. I mean, it was just like a lot of '80s babies' childhoods. We was outside. Um, there was not a lot of TV. I remember when we got a TV. Um, I don't know. It's I, I do miss it, but I'm, I'm I overall miss being a child. <laughs> I miss being a child. Being a grown up is overrated. Um, me and my sister didn't really start doing stuff together. Like we would do stuff with the other groups of children, like in our little part of the village. Um, I grew up in a village called Atlas Village, and then there was a smaller section of that village because the villages are broken up into even smaller pieces. I lived in a part called Italy, Little Italy. And all the kids in that neighborhood would always get together and play sports and cricket and stuff like that. Even some of the girls would take part in it, but even if they don't take part in there around, my sister always had a book in her hand, which is not surprising that she wrote books when she got older. But um, we didn't we didn't do stuff together till later in life when our mom had moved here. My sister, we were separated from our parents basically, and then. It was just me and her in St. Thomas traveling together, doing things. That's That was later in our teenage years. But as kids, like, we're pretty separated. I went one way and she went the other way because I always liked to play sports. And she would hang out with our older girl cousins. Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, what was your favorite pastimes? Did you say that? My favorite pastime was, like, it's weird because I, I, I don't know if you saw my Instagram. Um... I went to hang out with one of my favorite uncles a couple of weeks ago. His name was Lionel. He grew up Rastafarian and he always had like um, what you guys would call gardens in the mountains. So I would always go with him to the mountains to like grow vegetables and just I like I like doing physical things like being in the dirt. Mm. Yeah, that's that was one of my favorite things to do. Going with him and learning stuff like he bought me animals. I had goats. I had sheep had pigs i would take care of them and then he would sell them and i'd give me a cut of the money and he, so that that's kind of like my favorite favorite thing about that time in my life i grew up in the countryside so oh okay yeah all right well i guess that answers the question about Dwayne and saint kitts uh can't wait to hear your sister's rebuttal to to that oh, she'll <laughs> probably tell you about how i cried over my goats when one one of them died <laughs> <laughs> she'll tell you committed suicide or something like that oh my god okay uh, well speaking of john let's go ahead and jump into your financial corner since uh this person said that they're struggling with 401k and roth options and i'm sorry i don't listen i don't know what happened but it looked like you were writing in hieroglyphics <laughs> with some of these uh Was that from cam <laughs> Man, let's see. Okay. John, let's go ahead and jump into it and tell us a little bit about 401k and Roth options and quickly get us through uh, your financial corner. Uh, thanks for the, the joke, Dwayne. Appreciate it about Canada. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> well taken. Um, so you mentioned 401k and Roth options, uh, uh, mystery dude from Orlando. Um, I don't necessarily know uh, what your situation is, but I assume that um, you have your 401k through your employer. And um, Wait a minute. You didn't say Orlando, just say Florida. Well, well, Florida. I thought it was Orlando. Never mind. I'm looking at it. Wait a minute. Did it say Orlando? No, it just say Florida. I'm my bad. Go ahead. Forty and slip. <laughs> Mystery guy from Florida, not Orlando. Could be. But and I didn't see what it says is a male. Could be a woman. I don't know. Wow. Thank you for taking me to task on all those uh, indiscrepancies. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't necessarily mm-hmm. know your situation. Um. I can tell you what the difference is. Um, of course, I would tell you to invest in both. But of course, the 401k, it's usually offered by your employer. Um, you don't have a wealth of options as far as investments are concerned with the 401k, i.e. individual stocks. Um, you may have it with some companies. For, for the most part, it's basically just funds or bonds or they have something called like a uh, was it a term? Um, it has a term limit or whatnot as far as it, that particular fund is usually set to when you plan to retire. And that fund changes the older you become. So the, so the younger you are, the more aggressive that particular fund is. Uh, the older you are, the less aggressive it becomes um, because you're, you're getting closer to retirement. Um, I don't necessarily know how you have it diversified. Um, if you do change, it's called a target date fund. There it is. Target date fund. If you do charge, uh, choose a target date fund, um, as I mentioned before, those are your options for you. Um, me, especially if you're still young in your twenties, thirties, or even your forties, I like something that's a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so I used to have it at a target date fund, but years ago, and I'm talking many years ago, I removed it from that and I diversified it into um, something called or some things called uh, large cap, uh, mid cap and then small cap. Uh, the difference between those uh, large cap is usually more stable companies. So like your apples, your Walmarts. Um, your Amazons, uh, your brick and mortar, things that you normally consume, Starbucks in there, um, Burger King, McDonald's. um, Those, once again, give you good conservative uh, options. Uh, Mid cap is a little bit more aggressive. Um, The holdings with that particular company is usually two to 10 billion. Large cap is 10 billion or more. Um, Probably less risky than small caps, which I'll get into in a second. Um, But the growth potential um, is greater than you would have with large caps. So you probably have a higher risk, but a higher reward if you go with that particular fund. Small cap is basically the same thing. Higher risk, higher reward than big caps. And that's because um, those particular companies are fledgling. And their holdings are between $250 million and $2 billion as far as evaluation is concerned. So I have a, uh, I have my 401k invested in that. I also have uh, international stocks as well. Um, same thing. They have higher risk, but high rewards along with those. But When you say international stocks, what do you mean? Or international fund. It's like an ETF. Because basically everything that I just mentioned as far as large caps. So large caps mid caps and small caps. I've referenced a, uh, like a total market um, ETF with Vanguard and you can actually get them with other brokerages like Fidelity. Um, what's the other one? T row price. Uh, and what's a Merrill Lynch and a myriad of others. Webull, uh, Robin Hood, you can actually mm-hmm. get those particular ETFs. You can get the international ETF um, as well within your 401k. Boy, I thought you were talking about you had some funds hiding in Switzerland or something. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no. 
But um, you said I have international a, funds. <laughs> what you got going on? International. I probably wouldn't want to talk about it here. <laughs> international exchange traded funds. I'm snitching, man. Oh. man. Not bad. But, but yeah, that's how I normally have mine um, set up, and then um. For the most part, the one that I normally uh, put most of the money into or most of the principal balance into is uh, S- anything that has S&P 500 uh, associated with it. So any type of fund, there's only just one. Um, you choose a p- particular percentage of whatever the principal balance that you have uh, to move that money or to invest that money. And then you put that percentage in there. And then you also uh, use that same percentage to put your contribution. So whatever you have coming out of your paycheck, a portion of those funds goes towards uh, that particular ETF, whether it's in a large cap, mid cap or small cap. Uh, the difference between an IRA is you have more control with the IRA. Um, the limit for uh, the 401k, let me get back to the 401 401- one K real quick, I think it's 15%. So that's a maximum, I think of $23,000. If you're under the age of 50 and I believe it's over 30,000 over the age of 50. Um, the thing with the IRA is you can invest a maximum if you're under the age of 50 or 59, I believe is $7,000. Um, after the age of 59, it's closer to, I think it's over $8,000 that you could place in there one particular year. And then with the IRA, being that you just relegated to ETFs uh, and bonds uh, with a 401k, you can also choose ETFs with your IRA, but you can also invest in individual stocks as well. And, um, you don't receive a penalty if you absolutely need access to the money with an IRA. There is no tax penalty with that. Um, and then on top of that, it limits your or it reduces your tax liability. So what I mean by that is, let's say you earn $50,000 a year and you don't want to be taxed on $50,000 a year, but you somehow have part $7,000 uh, in your IRA for that particular tax year. So you won't be taxed on $50,000. You'll be taxed on $43,000, just as an example. Um, I also suggest uh, whatever your company is willing to match, you go ahead and you match that. So it's uh, they're going to pay you or match 4% of whatever you put in, 100%. Then put in 4%. If you want to put in more, that's up to you. I would probably take the rest and just park it into an IRA and then you can diversify it the way that you like. That's all I got. If you have any more specifics, please reach out again. Man, you probably gonna have to play this in slow motion. Whoever wrote this one, you have to rewind. I know I'm at the rewind because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes John be talking in hieroglyphics with this financial thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we're at that age, though, man. So I yeah. get my man's question, yo. I really get it. We're at that age where we got to figure this shit out, man. It's one of yeah. those things where it's difficult to bloviate about it and, you know, try to be as uh, simple as possible. At least I hope that, that that's my reach. That's my goal. So I appreciate you asking those questions and having the faith and trust in me to um, answer some of those questions. Because, you know, I'm just a regular guy, just like everybody else, um, trying to figure out how to grow wealth. And uh, slow and steady. So if you want like more specifics, if you want to reach out to that same text line, if you want more specifics as far as what that looks like, because I know, you know, you'd probably rather see it than me just talk about it. But it's difficult to do that in the podcast space. But we'll figure it out. We'll get you we'll get you where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is some helpful tips. And, you know, John has helped me along the way, you know, when I've had questions before with investments and things like that. And I think there was an episode now that I sit back, I mean, shoot, what probably within the first 10 episodes where we had a real down conversation about that when we first started doing this segment, because 
I didn't know, you know, I knew minimum, but I didn't know to that full extent, you know, and I didn't know sometimes where my money was going and how it was growing and stuff like that. And so um, it is very helpful. And I, and I think that what I will say is this isn't an easy thing to follow. It isn't easily comprehended. And so for you to come and break things down at times for people and, and, and it, it's a good thing. But, you know, I'm not saying that everybody's stupid, but I'll say sometimes I have to rewind it to, to make sure I'm following everything you're saying because you're breaking it down good. But what you're talking about, it isn't as easy as opening up a book. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm glad that you're trying to educate some of us that don't uh, really, really follow um, the stock market or, you know, in this person's case, understand the Roth and the um, 401k and those things like that. And so I always see stuff come up on my Twitter about the Roth and 401k. So I, I'm, I'm just leery of all things government, but that's, a, that's another topic for another, for another show. I'm not going to get into that today. Uh, <laughs> <You got time. laughs> all right, let's go ahead and jump into the movie review this week, this week, we review the show that was picked by Steph and it was called Unprison. And so if you guys followed the show, uh, Steph picked this sh- the first season of this show. This is on Hulu starring Carrie Washington and Delroy Lindo. It was a great first season. I don't think we were really sure if this show was going to come back for a second season. Very glad and thankful that it did come back and very thankful that Steph actually picked it for us to review again because um, we had talked about it over the phone and I I, I had forgot all about the dog on show coming back. Um, not because, though I didn't like it. Like I said, I really enjoy it. But a lot of times these shows, they take, a lot of times now to come back and they only be, you know, uh, eight to 10 episodes. Whereas back in the day, we were used to shows that were, you know, 16 to 24 episodes in a season, but Steph picked this, this show unprisoned part uh season two on Hulu. Before we jump into the review, starting off with Steph, uh, John, it is your choice next week for what we will be doing. Are we doing a top five? Are we doing a movie review? Are we doing an album review? Are we doing a show review? We are doing a movie review. It is on Netflix starring uh, Regina King and uh, Terrence Howard and a myriad of others. Uh, Title of the movie is Shirley. Man, let me tell you something. (laughs) Tell us something. Tell us something. Do you know, I promise to God, I kid you not. I sat there Uh-oh. as I was watching on prison. Um, I was waiting on my wife. She was doing a whole bunch of things. And it came over me at the time, but I was like, I'll check it later. I was like, you know, that Shirley movie was supposed to come out. Mm-hmm. Why well, ain't seen nothing about it? You know, and, and this is a Regina King production her acting in it so i know it's excellent and i said you know i mean just the the previous night i had opened up netflix and um i usually you'll see it in you know the recommendation the top or whatever i didn't see it so i said did they put it on pause or, or, or am i just not in the right area look you know i didn't go search for it but i was just saying that i kid you not i was just saying that crap Three three days ago, two days ago. I'm sorry, two days ago. And I watched it the day it came out, and that it was so silent on social media. Really? Okay. When did it come out, Steph? Uh, March 23rd. Wow. And I know we had. I know. I think we had talked. Didn't we talk about it on the show, Steph? Oh uh, yeah, we mentioned it. Dwayne can't hear us. Oh jeez. Hold on. Technical difficulties again. Hold on, y'all. All right, Steph, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Thanks, John, for that choice for Shirley. Sorry about the technical difficulties, y'all, again, but we're getting through it. Steph, what was your score? What were your thoughts on Unprison Season 2? Um, It was excellent. I was glad to see them incorporate therapy into the show because y'all know I'm a champion for therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, those of us who are Scandal fans know that the cliffhanger for Season 2 for uh, Unprisoned 
was parallel to the uh, cliffhanger for season two of Scandal. It was it was so funny. I was like, oh my god, Carrie did this again. Um, mm. And pay, her character Paige is annoying, but um, <laughs> she she annoys my spirit. Um, but if I had to rate it, I'm gonna give it a nine point five. All right. Okay, big timer. What you got for it? This is one of those shows I think we don't deserve because it's just well put together. It's produced wonderfully. Ah. It is uh, just a marvel just to watch. Um, I didn't think that it could top uh, what season one produced, but uh, it was beyond my expectations. Um, I enjoyed that everyone was unpacking uh, their issues and to a degree, it seems like it's been all resolved to a certain degree, but then um, I was just very sad when I came to the final episode and watched the final moments and just to leave us on that cliffhanger. I just, it just left me wanting for more and I want season three to be here immediately. Um, I will give it a 9.7 out of 10. All right. Dwayne, what you got for it? Yeah, I will give it a nine too. Um, I was thinking just on, on the line of lines of what Steph said, I was like, who's the villain of this show? And I thought it was her too, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> like, if there was a villain, she's the villain because she keeps starting shit. But it's really good, man. Um, I like how they brought Mal, Mal on. I and like um, that, <laughs> I love how Delroy Lindo is just words of wisdom all the time. And I was thinking... If I make it to 60, 70, I'm getting a dangly arrow, man. <laughs> dangly arrow. I am. All right. That's all, all right. I got. It's good, though. Good show. Good show. Really good show. Yeah, I'm going to go with a 10 on this one. Um, perfect 10. I really, oh. really enjoyed this. Um, we, As John stated earlier, we really don't deserve this type of entertainment that we're getting. And it's a, it's a really a crime a crime and a sin that this show is not being promoted the way it should be. Um, this is an excellent show. One of the best shows I've seen in a very long time, especially considering these newer shows, Carrie Washington, she's gratefully annoying um, because it's just like, you know, uh, but you know, she's excellent in her role. The, the stepmother, the white lady, she's excellent in her role. Um, you know, the kid, he's coming into his own, even the, the, um, the sister, uh, you I forgot her name. Esty, Esty. She, she did great this season and Delroy Lindo is just a gem. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I, I noticed that I don't see too many interviews for him. And so I was just looking him up and there was a nice little, interview that he did with GQ back in 2021, I believe. And um, if you haven't read it, you know, I would recommend reading it, but he's just phenomenal and how he really was trying this time and, you know, not being a knucklehead uh, for the most part. I, I really enjoyed that. So I'm ready for season three to get here. This was an excellent watch. If you guys haven't watched it yet, please check out Unprison on Hulu season two. Excellent show. Excellent show. All right, uh, we're getting back to, okay, next week is Shirley. So let's go ahead and jump into One Has to Go. Okay. One Has to Go today is sponsored by Coming to America characters. Oh, jeez. One of these characters has to go from that movie and never had been a developed character on that movie. The characters are as follows. Randy Watson. With the band Sexual Chocolate. Reverend Brown, he's been his reverend since. (laughs) (laughs) Little boy boy. Clarence from Mighty Shop. And Morris (laughs) from Mighty Shop. (laughs) Now, all four of these characters were played by uh, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, and they actually were all in one setting at one time during the movie, during the Black Awareness Program, as Clarence and Morris was with their friends sitting there eating on chicken, and, and Morris thought it was the pro- was the, was the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the trash can. <laughs> I whoop your ass. I whoop your ass. <laughs> Uh, and then we had Randy Watson on stage after that being introduced uh, before being introduced by Reverend Brown. So this is a personal favorite of mine as far as movies, as you guys know, but I really want to do this because this is going to be totally difficult 
for any of us. Well, for me, I'll say. Let's go ahead and start off first with Steph. Steph, one has to go. What were the choices again? Randy Watson with Sexual Chocolate, played by Eddie Murphy. Clarence from Mighty Shop, played by Eddie Murphy. All right, sorry about that, y'all. Another technical difficulty. So, Reverend Brown, Steph, played by Arsenio Hall, oh. and Morris, played by Arsenio Hall from the barbershop. One has to go. Which one? Morris can go. Whew. I thought it was trash can. All right. Uh, John, which one has to go? He did whoop Joe Lewis's ass. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Brown. Oh man, okay. (laughs) Dwayne, which one you got? I can't get rid of Reverend Brown, man, because we wouldn't get that scene with the the ladies. (laughs) Turn around for me, ladies. He would get canceled if he was on TV today. Mm. God. Mm. I uh, can't get rid of Ryan Randy. Shit, I got a t-shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? He helped Gilligan get off the island. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I'm waiting for Randy and the band to get back together. I got my shirt ready. <laughs> can't get rid of Clarence. Got to get rid of Morris, man. Okay. Clarence, Clarence is the funniest thing out of the barbershop, man. So I'll get rid of Morris. Mm-hmm. This is very difficult for me um, because of the characters. This is going to be my favorite movie. I can't get rid of Morris because he, he was gaslighting Clarence, <laughs> you know, and they just was going at it. Reverend Brown, I definitely can't get rid of. I'm going to get rid of Randy Watson. And I got what? his shirts. Ah. Yes. What? That's I the get... one Funko Pop I don't have that I regret not getting. And you have the Randy Watson. Yes, yes I do. I sure do. Um, wow, I wasn't the kidding. only reason I get rid of Randy Watson is because Randy was only on one small part of the show. True, the bar- everybody in the barbershop scene had a cup, they had a couple of scenes, Especially and then that. Reverend Brown not only did he have it at the Black Awareness, but he went back to the house when he preached to them when they had the engagement ceremony. Yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite parts, <laughs> so that's why I couldn't get rid of them. But it was such a significant part with the Randy White. It was. Yeah, it re- listen, prom- I, more I, prominent lines from the movie. I got the shirt. I got. He just sang a song. Really, you know. If you took it, I, I'll say this: If you took his for me, if you took his part out, the movie would still be extremely funny. Okay. If Mama named Clay, I'm gonna call him Clay. Mm-hmm, that's right. <laughs> he always gonna be Clay. He always gonna be James name too. He Clay. He Clay. <laughs> it's just Boris and Clarence were the best dynamic duo in that whole movie. Like you, you, they were better than Akeem and Simi. They were better than, 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 than Reverend Brown and Randy Watson for the brief moment. It just, those two there made the movie for me. And that, that trash can with the chicken, cause, cause Morris wasn't paying attention to nothing. <laughs> I thought it was a trash can. This is so but when Clarence tells you where he's going, yeah, we're in a rally. We need it too. Yeah. <laughs> girl. Yes, <laughs> that's why I'm going shit. <laughs> I just want to say real quick, I got to change my rating on that one because I got the worst aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Oh my mm-hmm. god, it tastes like mouthwash. What you got, Steph? It has to get a three. Thank you. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm on my mm-hmm. second glass. Yes. What? Yeah, That's how you talk. <laughs> I'm going to see if Total Wine will give me back my $10. All right. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump uh, and quickly into what do we got? Oh, reality show news. Steph, what you got for us this week? recap um love is blind uh the reality show on netflix where blind. people meet they fall in love sight unseen um it's coming back to the original city atl baby um so for those of you in atlanta they're gonna be doing auditions love and blind has what, what been was out for a while yeah it started in 2020 where was it at last time Steph? 
Where Dina? was it at last time? I forget. Yeah, but there, Atlanta was the initial city, and now they're coming back to Atlanta. Okay. Oh, they were in Charlotte. No, they weren't in Charlotte. Where were they? Steph, Where you going to try they? out? Huh? Yeah, no. Absolutely yes. Because I'm shallow. And if I if that uh, door opens and he is ugly, I'm going to be like, uh-uh. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Unless Mal is <laughs> on the other side of that door now. If Mal is over there. Mal, uh, uh, who's the other guy? You, Jazz, Jazz from Drew from- Hill. Oh, Drew Hill, yes, Lord. He done lost some weight too. He's doing pretty good. No, I like No, him. no, not no, not weight like, oh my God, he's you know, no, he oh, he's not on nope. Olympic or anything. No, I'm he just had got very, him. very, very big. And mm-hmm. he he's he's gotten down to he looks almost at the size he was when they first came out. Okay, yeah, he can call me. Cause yeah. let me tell you something. <laughs> Ruben Ruben Stutter lost so much weight. I'm like, he can't divorce his wife and call me. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Ruben lost a lot of weight. He did. He, he looked did. like he hit that Olympic pin a couple I of times. I'm gonna Google him right now. Yeah, he did. <laughs> All right, love is blind. Um, uh, Khadijah Hack, better known as one of the, she's a twin, one of the best friends of Khloe Kardashian, a regular on the original, keeping up the Kardashians. Um, her ex NFL player husband has filed for divorce, and he is seeking spousal support. Um. <sighs> You know when I hear, uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, I know what you're saying. When I hear that a man has filed for spousal support, <laughs> there are only a couple of letters that come to a word that comes to mind. It starts with a P and ends with a Y. But, but some of your group members applaud when men do that. They love yeah, it. and I, and I have a problem with that because you need to get it out the mud, bro. Even if you got a. <laughs> You know what I mean? Quick, because I know we're short on time, but what's wrong with a man seeking spousal support? You gotta get it out of mud. Um, <laughs> because wrong? unless he's unless they have children and he's taking full custody of that child, <laughs> um, I don't think that you need spouse child support. Yes, spousal support. No, I feel he like just Mary J to the poorhouse. Yeah, I, I feel like, and that goes for women too. I just feel like, hey. If you 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 have a golden opportunity <sighs> when that person is a celebrity or they're making money, this guy's a former NFL player. You have a golden opportunity to take advantage while you're with that person and kind of uh, leech off of their celebrity celebrityism or whatever you want to call it. I know that ain't even a word, but you can leech. <laughs> shut up, John. You can leech off of that and and build something for yourself get a business you know get 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 get, get an llc or something get that out the mud but don't don't sit there and be like oh i want spousal support Yo, I mean, you stop <laughs> saying get it out the mud man richard lawson just got a check from beyonce's mama and what did he need a check for he's a world-renowned actor when he just in a couple of tubi movies i mean come on bro that's oh. beyonce's mama you don't need. I mean, he his daughter isn't Beyonce, but I mean, he's an actor in his own right. His daughter is. You didn't need her damn money. Listen, these oh, men, no. and like your group members say, these men are coming for what they are owed. Man, they need to sit down somewhere. Um, <laughs> anything else, Steph? <laughs> um, real quick, uh, the show Love and Marriage Huntsville. We're coming back around to the controversy with Maurice and Kimmy Scott. Come on, Bama. As to whether or not uh, um, Kimmy was considered a side piece after her husband was pressuring her to have sex while she was going through chemotherapy. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. This guy needs to be put in front of a firing squad. Go ahead. It, it, was, it, was, it was. And, while, you know, and I was going through chemotherapy at the same time. He was like, your lack of sex drive is uh, a mental health thing. It's not physical. When you go in for a chemo consult, they literally tell you, you will lose sex drive. Like, they... so. I don't know. Dude was crazy. Like, listen, uh, again, I'm about to be graphic here. I don't care. Oh, Lord. If you, if your spouse is going through something as extreme as chemotherapy to save their life, that's what you got two hands for. Use them. (laughs) She even went so far on the show as to say she would force herself to have sex with her husband so he would not. No. You need to stop being selfish and you and I hope once they get over chemo, they leave your ass. If they say if you say something like that, you yourself got two hands you could use on yourself. Fellas and ladies, use them appropriately. 
Okay, if you if you that damn set starved, right? You, you could also you just look- not have sex. But Bruh. believe it or not, y'all, that's a common thing. Like sitting in like I believe it. groups and stuff, women would come and tell their stories, and the only thing I would think was, "Thank you, God, I'm single while I'm going through this." I believe it. Like, bruh, I'm listen. I'm not trying to. You know, I ain't trying to be. I'm my. I love doing things with my wife. <laughs> but I am about to be 42 years old. I'm not 20. I was 26 when I met her. Mm-hmm. Okay. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, we ain't going at it like rabbits when we were 26 <laughs> and she was 24. Okay. I'm just letting y'all know that it ain't happening like we rabbits. Okay. I'm so, sorry, Iris. <laughs> please tr- sit there and have some type of compassion for your spouse. You guys are sick. Okay. Anything else, Steph? Well, uh, just... Last thing, August Alcina, he's joined the cast oh, of The Real yeah. Life. <laughs> And he's recently come forward um, talking about how he's in oh, love with no. man, and he said <laughs> open his heart and that love is complex. Oh and hell no! Accepting <laughs> of the fact that he loves a man. So Jada, this is your fault. Um, Sit your ass down. <laughs> Dwayne has not you, wine. Steph. Uh, I'm talking about August. Oh, oh, August, but he says his heart is open, y'all. So literally, yeah, that's Pause. ridiculous. Hey. <laughs> Quick question. Love and marriage, is it in any other city outside of Huntsville? Detroit and D.C. But they're not as good as the Huntsville one, I'm going to take in. Because I never hear anything about them. D.C. was boring and Detroit was a little too hood for me. Um, Of course. I'm trying to get back into Detroit, but D.C., ever since Chris and Monique Samuels decided they were going to break up, I don't care about them other people. Let me tell you something. And I know we, I think we have somebody, some people in Detroit that download us. I don't know. And, I, and you know, I don't care. Detroit is the dirtiest city I've ever been to in my life. And that's saying a lot because I've gone through Jacksonville a couple of times. Dirtier than Cleveland? I've never been to Cleveland. Cleveland needs a bleach bath. Really? I'm, I'm going to check with Cleveland. But Detroit, Detroit is so dirty and stinking that I haven't visited Detroit since I was about 13, 12 years old, 12 or 13 years old. And I can still smell it to this day. Jeez. Well, I'll be going soon, so I'll Oof. be okay. You better take you some air freshness and last all. All right. Anything else, Steph? We love you, Detroit. We love you, Detroit. That's, it for, reality. <laughs> love you, Detroit. That's it for reality recap. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Steph. Real quick here, we got a few things, a few items here in the news. I'm not going to take too long as we get out of here. Uh, first things first. Have you guys heard the news about the chicken wing bandit? Oh, you talking about the lady? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is this is. Is that what we're going by? Is is she dubbed the chicken wing bandit? No, I'm just, made call, that up? I'm just calling her that. Wow. Uh, credit to the neighborhood talk on this one, neighbors. It looks like a 68 year old woman who stole 1.5 million dollars worth of chicken wings back in 2020 has finally learned her fate. We, they previously reported that Vera Liddell, who was employed by the Illinois school district, was caught taking advantage of students being homeschooled during the pandemic. Since kids were being schooled at home, the school was granted permission to send meal kits to the residencies. Well, Miss Liddell placed orders for the meal kits with the school's provi- food provider, but was adding on extra items, some chicken wings. Mm. Her scheme was discovered when the district saw the invoices included bone-in chicken, something they don't serve students. <laughs> she ordered over 11,000 cases of wings for a total of $1.5 million. She was sentenced to nine years in prison. Now, I don't know what her circumstances are, but in 2020, chicken wings did get astronomically high out of nowhere. Um, I thought maybe she... White collar? Yeah, and, and I thought maybe with the crime she probably had. I was like, okay, so she took away from the kids' meal. She didn't. She just was ad known. Um, so I'm not upset at her. And NFL star Chris Jones said he wants to step in. He'll pay for the wings to free her. So uh, they're not gonna free her though. <laughs> they're not gonna free her. Um, an update on a news item that we talked about. I want to say. This, well, yeah, it did happen in 2023. So this was last year we talked about it. A.J. Owens out of Marion County here in Florida um, 
was killed by Susan Lorenz, I believe. And so the Marion County woman who admitted to killing her black neighbor was just convicted of manslaughter. Uh, this is courtesy of the Shade Room. According to multiple outlets, a jury found Susan Lorenz guilty of manslaughter in the 2023 death of, and I always pronounce her name wrong. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I'm going to say Ajike, A.J. Owens. As we previously reported, there was a confrontation about Owens's kids playing in Lorenz's yard. Uh, this incident prompted Owens to go to Lorenz's door, and that's when the fatal shooting occurred. Lorenz admitted to the shooting and was arrested a few days later. The sheriff's office also said during the time of Owens's death, the neighbors were in a long-standing feud over Owens' children playing. An all-white six-person jury found Lorenz guilty of manslaughter, despite the 60-year-old asserting that her actions were in self-defense. Lorenz faces up to 30 years in prison. How the hell are you in self-defense as this person? don't have no weapon or gun or anything to present themselves. And I remember when I talked about it before, I think she had gotten in trouble before with someone with uh, trying to shoot them or something. I don't remember. Uh, in, in, in a sad note here, woman was sentenced to 11 years in prison after arguing she was legally allowed to kill a man because he sexually trafficked her. A Milwaukee woman who argued she was immune from prosecution because the man she fatally shot was sexually trafficking her was sentenced Monday to 11 years in prison, according to Kenosha. Is that Kenosha? Kenosha County court documents. Uh, Crystal Kaiser, who earlier this year pleaded guilty to reckless homicide in this case, will also serve five years parole. Kenosha County District Attorney Michael Gravely told CNN in an email Monday. The 11 years is minus 570 days because she has served those awaiting trial. Kaiser shot Randall Villar, 34, at his Kenosha, Wisconsin home in 2018 when she was 17 years old, Kenosha County Court prosecutor said. Kaiser shot Villar in the head, burned his house down, and stole his BMW, the Associate Press reported. She initially was charged with multiple counts, including first-degree intentional homicide, arson, car theft, and being a felon in possession of a firearm. Kaiser, who is black, argued she was trafficked by Volar, who was white, beginning when she was 16. Wisconsin Supreme Court ruled in 2022 a state law absolving trafficking victims of criminal liability for offenses committed as a direct result of being trafficked extends to first degree intentional homicide. The court ruled Kaiser's legal team should have the opportunity to present evidence at trial that the crimes she was charged with were a direct result of the violence she experienced, according to a statement from the Chicago Community Bond Fund. The ruling allowed Kaiser to argue she was justified in the killing, but it also said Kaiser must pro first provide evidence for a trial judge. Her decision to kill Volar was connected to being trafficked before she could invoke the immunity, the AP reported. Kaiser maintains Volar's death was a result of self-defense, the Bond Fund said, but in May this year, she pleaded guilty to a reduced count of reckless homicide court document state. Kaiser, 17 at the time, put a gun in her book bag in June 2018 and traveled from Minis from Milwaukee to Villar's home in Kenosha after telling her boyfriend she was going to shoot him because she was tired of him touching her, AP reported, citing court documents. Uh, um, man, this is, this is sad. Um <clears throat> is pregnant again the girl is pregnant i said your girl is pregnant again who kiki palmer oh my god what's that child number 13 kiki palmer oh kiki palmer oh i'm thinking of kiki wyatt my lord yeah, we're gonna stay out of, we're gonna we've learned our lesson with kiki palmer we're gonna stay out of her business uh, and everybody else that's the word on the street. I put that in there yeah we're we gonna leave her and darius jackson alone yeah we're gonna leave her and the drake cone alone um yeah so very very sad news when you hear of this um this is a child um, being involved with a 34 year old. So I don't know whether she was being sex trafficked or not, but it, uh, yeah. I mean, 11 years in prison. That's yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. No, I got one more thing that we can run into sports. 
uh, real quick here. 40 year old Denver man, Eugene Robertson, sentenced to 143 years in prison after going on a rampage following Burger King, refusing to take his drugs as a form of payment. Now, come on, man. How... That's all we got for news today. Dwayne. <laughs> How you gonna end with that one, dog? <laughs> I can't. As a as, as a bartering system, go ahead and take two rocks for a big man. Okay. Um. Well, he was he was shooting. They say that he did shoot, but 143 years for not killing someone. That's he didn't kill anyone. No, he didn't kill anyone. He was he was found. He was a jury found him guilty of 17 crimes, including eight counts of attempted murder. He was facing over 400 years. Mm. Well, we got 104. It's a win. Um, 43. Huh? 123? 143. 143. It's a win. He didn't get 400. Yeah, so, it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of time, but real, real quick, we survived. Football's back. College. We can start off with Florida State going to Georgia Tech. Any any thoughts, John? Well, they're not going to Georgia Tech. It's oh, a neutral it, site game. In Ireland. It's neutral site? Correct. Where is it going to be? Ireland. Oh, shit. Ireland. Ireland? Ireland. Well, that's different. Yeah, the game this, is Saturday. Like, this Saturday. Right. The game is at 12, right? 12 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hope they had them gave them boys time to get over there and adjust and practice. Um, they usually do. They've been doing this for a few years now. Yeah, because I think uh, Michigan went there last year, right? Well, Michigan's been there. Uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame been has. There. I think Georgia Tech's been there multiple times. Okay. So, so. Okay. According to ESPN, bet they're favored by eleven. I have no idea what's going on with college football. I don't know who's playing for who. I don't know who's coaching for who. We don't have no Saban no more. We don't have no um, Harbaugh. Everything's up in the air, which I think would make for a really exciting college football season. So on this game, uh, John, Florida State's preseason ranking is number 10. And Tech, I don't know what they're doing, so – how do you see when did this one turning out? Probably a blowout? I don't know if it's necessarily a blowout because um, we have um, the quarterback who used to be at uh, Clemson and then he fleed Clemson and sought refuge at Oregon State. And now he's been parked at FSU. So um, I don't know, but I'll, I'm definitely going to choose Florida State as the uh, victor. All right. Another game of note, speaking of Clemson, Stephanie, Clemson, Georgia. I don't know if this one's a neutral site game as well, right? Not really. It's here in Atlanta. It's in the Dome. Was, was now, it the kickoff or whatever they call it? Yeah. Saturday, 12 p.m. as well. So these these games will be going against each other. That's this Saturday? Yes. No, the 31st. Not the, the 30, Yeah, the 31st. Yeah, it's the 31st. Mm-hmm. I think Florida the, State and Georgia Tech is the only – um, FBS football game that's being aired uh, this weekend. Yeah. Kickoff oh, is, see, kickoff okay. is, the kickoff okay. is You're right, John. Next so, week. so this is week Florida State week zero eight twenty four. Yeah, right. And then following week week one, as I like to say it, um, there's some games on Thursday, but not nothing too serious. Murray State, nothing too serious. Uh, but then week one, as they say, Clemson, Georgia. Georgia's favored by 14 and a half or 14. It was 13 and a half when I bet it. Mind y'all business. Um, <laughs> thoughts on this game, Steph? What do you think about your, your, your Clemson Tigers this year? I have no thoughts. No thoughts. You 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 have something for us after week one then? Yeah, yeah Dabo's been the butt of jokes. He's been running his mouth all summer. He's been the butt of jokes this entire yeah. offseason. He's been running his mouth all summer. They have been quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, if we win, I would be very, very surprised because everybody that has tried to bet me, I'm like, I'm not even playing these games. <laughs> if y'all win this game, Dabo ain't never leaving Clemson. Listen, ever. 
And I've been praying. I took it to the <laughs> altar at church and everything. Because Georgia is the favorite to win it all this year. Because you don't have any Nick Saban, like I said. Uh, they're pretty much bringing back everybody. Plus, they have the most con- continuity. And it's a wide open field. And you, this year, we have the 12 team playoff. So, this year, they're going to get in. Listen. I'm a realist with nothing else. Dabo has lost his recruiting power. Mm -hmm. That little run we had, we we needed to enjoy it while it lasted because I don't think we'll see another one. So, so how long do you think they they give? How long is his leash? A year, two years? What do you think? Truth be told, Dabo could anything he does. Those folks are going to make excuses for him because when you go up in Pickens County, South Carolina, he is God. Mm. So I, I watch those people online. Everything he does, they support him. They make excuses for him. So he has a long leash. They, they're they not going to get tired of him. Well, the, 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 and the thing is, it too, the ACC is not that tough. I think the only teams are going to be Florida State and Miami that he's going to have to contend with to win the state, to win the, the division. And then if you, get, if you get in the playoffs, you're going to get credit for that. But I'm looking forward to it this week. Mm. Um, like we said, we got we got finally got some, some games we could actually watch. Lord Jesus, that's all I have for sports. All We're right. Ready. Thank you guys so much. What is song of the week? Uh, man, who goes first this week? I ain't got time to even figure it out. Steph, what you got for song of the week? Mess by Lil Wayne. All right. Lil, whoa. Okay. Lil Wayne. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dwayne, what you got for song of the week? I got Buju Moving by Buju Bantan. I'll be seeing him in Atlanta in a couple weeks. All right. Big Timer, what you got for song of the week? We are one. Maze featuring Frankie Beverly. Hey. All right. My song of the week is "Free" by Denise Williams. <laughs> thank, you. thank you guys so much for listening to the Short Desk Podcast. Again, continue to download, support, send us a fan text. I apologize for going through that little mini small tangent I went on in the beginning, but guess what? I stand on it. It's my product. I believe in us, and I believe in me. So I stand <laughs> on what I said. And I mean it 100% right now. We are the Short Desk Podcast. Holla at your girl and your boys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Stop right there. Listen. Stop right there a minute. A man goes to a restaurant. You listening? (laughs) A man goes to a restaurant. He sits down. He's having a bowl of soup. He says to the waiter, waiter, come taste the soup. Waiter says, is there something wrong with the soup? He says, taste the soup. He says, is there something wrong with the soup? Is the soup too hot? He says, will you taste the soup? What's wrong? Is the soup too cold? Will you just taste the soup? All right. I'll taste the soup. Where's the spoon? Aha. (laughs) Aha. What do you know funny, you bastards? (laughs) 